Hey everybody, it's Mike with At Home and Wild Spaces. Thanks for joining us today. In today's video, we're going to be talking about something I consider a crucial skill for anybody who spends time in the backcountry. Namely, the ability to tell the difference between a black bear and a grizzly bear, and why it's not always so easy to tell the difference. In the great outdoors, forever free. Some of the most beautiful, awe-inspiring, and gasp-inducing landscapes on Earth are home to both black bears and grizzly bears. And if you plan to visit, that means you need to take some time to prepare and visit responsibly. And both of those demand that you know how to tell the difference between a black bear and a grizzly bear. And that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. But before we get going, if you haven't done so already, we'd invite you to hit that subscribe button and make sure to turn on notifications so that you don't miss a single At Home and Wild Spaces video. Also, with this video, we're gonna be giving away a free Don't Poke the Bear t-shirt to one follower who correctly identifies the 10 bears in the quiz at the end of this video. So if you're interested in getting yourself a sweet free t-shirt from At Home and Wild Spaces, then make sure to list your answers in the comment section, followed by the phrase, Don't Poke the Bear. All right, so let's get going. So why is it important? The main reason is, should you encounter a bear in person, there are some subtle differences to how you should respond to grizzly bears versus black bears. In other words, distinguishing bear species is a matter of personal safety. So make sure to stay tuned. We'll dive deeper into this topic in future videos. So some of you may be asking, is it really all that difficult to tell the difference between a black bear and a grizzly bear? Well, the answer is a little complicated. Oftentimes, no, it's not that difficult, but it can frequently also be difficult to tell the difference. Um, it really depends on the circumstances and on the bear. So fortunately, there are a number of really great resources out there, like this diagram by the National Park Service. Um, these diagrams are great because they, at a glance, kind of illustrate some of the visual differences between these two terrestrial bear species. But as useful as diagrams like these are, they fall a little short because bears like individual or bears like people are individuals in both personality and appearance. And what that means is that when you see a bear, it's not always going to visually correspond to one of these two stereotypical animals that you see in these diagrams. And as a result, people oftentimes get it wrong. So let's get into it. Let's discuss how to tell the difference and how to be sure of whether or not you're seeing a black bear or a grizzly bear. Let's start by debunking a couple of myths. Myth number one is that you can tell the difference between a black bear and a brown or grizzly bear by fur color. Now this one's really tricky because the bears are of course called black bears and brown bears. But the truth is is that fur color is a really poor indicator of bear species. The reason being is that black bears vary widely in color as do grizzly bears. In North America, about 50% of black bears are actually black in color. But they can range from black, brown, cinnamon, blonde, blue gray and in exceedingly rare cases even white and brown bears also known as grizzly bears they also vary widely in fur color from a lighter blonde to a darker brown that can sometimes appear as black depending on the circumstances so you're really best off by trying to identify the bear by characteristics other than fur color okay, so myth number two is that you can tell the difference between a black bear and a grizzly bear by the animal's size now this is problematic for a number of reasons. Now clearly, if you were to compare the world's largest grizzly bear against the world's largest black bear, then yeah, the grizzly bear would be the larger of the two. But it's really not that simple. We've seen a lot of really large black bears, and we've also seen some smaller brown bears. The truth is that there's a lot of variety in the size of both of these animals, and they kind of overlap and cross. So you can't just say big equals grizzly and small equals black bear. Another reason why it's problematic is because bears really need to be viewed from a safe distance, generally about 100 meters. So it can be very difficult to accurately estimate the size of a bear from that distance. So the main takeaway is that the animal's size or perceived size is also not a great indicator of whether or not it's a black bear or a grizzly bear. A third myth that I really want to address before we move on is this idea that only black bears can climb trees. While generally that is the case, this is again another example of bears not really perfectly fitting these various characteristics. There are in fact grizzly bears that can climb trees. The truth is just because you see a bear in a tree doesn't necessarily mean that's a black bear. A few weeks ago, we were really curious to see how many people in the At Home and Wild Spaces community could correctly identify 
a bear species. We had seen this bear earlier this year in our travels, and this is one of those bears that really blurred the lines. So we shared this footage on our Facebook page and asked our followers to tell us if they thought it was a black bear or a grizzly bear. About half of the people who viewed this footage thought that they were looking at a grizzly bear and half thought that they were looking at a black bear. This is in fact an American black bear. So a lot of people who thought it was a grizzly mentioned what they thought was a shoulder hump. Now the shoulder hump, which is generally associated with grizzly bears, is usually your best indicator of whether or not you're looking at a black bear or a grizzly bear. The main reason is because the shoulder hump can generally be pretty easily identified from a great distance, which means that you don't have to be close to the bear to get a good idea of its species. But with this particular bear, it threw a lot of people off because it has rather prominent shoulders. If you look, you can tell that there are shoulder blades moving underneath there. And that differs from the large muscular mass that we generally associate with grizzly bears. And a lot of people who looked at this bear saw those shoulders and thought, oh, this bear has a hump. So let's take a quick moment. So this is the black bear that we shared on social media. And this is a grizzly bear with a prominent shoulder hump. If you take a moment, you should be able to tell the difference between those shoulder blades moving underneath the skin and that large muscle that sits on the shoulders of a grizzly bear. So while the hump or lack thereof is generally your best first indicator, it's not foolproof as we've seen. For example, take this large grizzly bear that we saw this year. This is a massive bear and clearly a grizzly, but it lacks a prominent shoulder hump. And I can hear some of you saying it already, well, Mike, how do you know it was a massive bear? So here's your bonus tip of the day. While it's true generally that it's difficult to appraise the size of a bear from a great distance, sometimes you get lucky. And if you pay close attention to this footage, you'll notice that there are a couple of other animals that show up in the shot. While we were a, a long distance, roughly 500 yards from this bear, these other animals give us a really good indication. The beaver in the foreground is probably not a really large beaver, but it is definitely a beaver. But then the second indicator is those ducks that swim right behind the bear, and they give us a really good idea of how large this bear is. So beyond the hump, it's best to identify at least two other distinguishing traits if possible. Your next best indicator is the relative height of the shoulders and rump. As a rule, the back end or rump of black bears is higher than their shoulders. For grizzlies, the reverse is generally true. But the ability to accurately estimate the relative height of a bear's shoulders and rump will depend on your and the bear's positioning. Face shape or profile is your next best clue. Grizzlies generally have what's called a dish-shaped facial profile. This is defined by a prominent forehead and brow on a separate plane from the muzzle. Black bears generally have what's called a flat face profile with a subdued forehead and brow on the same plane as the muzzle. But again, bears don't always fit perfectly within these general parameters. We've seen some grizzly bears with remarkably flat facial profiles and some black bears that either because of scars or facial structure look like they have a more prominent brow. So again, not foolproof or after face shape, there is generally a difference in ear size between these two species. Relative to the animal size, black bears have larger, slightly elongated ears. Grizzlies have smaller, rounder ears. That being said, it's also not uncommon for a bear to have damaged ears, either from a fight earlier in its life or some other kind of injury. So be sensitive to that possibility. So lastly, let's talk about claws. Grizzly bears have subtly curved claws that can reach up to four inches in length. Chances are that is significantly longer than the fingers on your hand. While black bears have significantly shorter claws, generally between one and two inches, that have a more dramatic curve. Now, as you might have guessed, and it's important that we talk about this, if you are close enough to a bear to see its claws with the naked eye, then either you've stumbled across a bear on the trail, which does happen. If that does happen to you, it's important that you don't stop to take a bunch of pictures you need to group up with everybody you're with and slowly back away and give that animal space. The other alternative is that you've just made a very poor life choice and that you've seen a bear, you got overly excited and you're just too close to this bear and you're taking pictures. It's really important that we view bears from a safe distance. It's important for their safety as well as yours. Here's another quick tip. If you are close enough to a bear to capture a photo of it on your phone, you are way too close. If you plan on visiting bear country, you really should plan on taking a super telephoto lens, a good pair of binoculars, or a spotting scope. The value of having one of these three instruments with you when you're out in bear country really can't be overstated. 
It allows you to get a really up close view of these beautiful animals while also giving them that crucial 100 meters or 100 yards of space. The simple fact of the matter is that a lot of people get overly excited when they see a bear in the wild and they get way too close. So if you find yourself in that situation, we'd encourage you to make sure to back up and don't be afraid to invite other people to do the same. Our experience, generally speaking, has been that if we invite people to give the animal more space to back up and to stay together, people usually cooperate and are pretty agreeable. Hey, I would stay back. There's a grizzly on a kill, not 70 feet in front of you. Okay, if there is an instance where somebody is harassing an animal, then we'd encourage you to contact the proper authorities because that's dangerous for them, it's dangerous for the bear, and we really should be visiting these places to admire these wonderful animals and not to cause any potential conflicts between them and us. Now, you should all have the information that you need to correctly identify bear species every single time, and you're gonna get a chance to do it in just a minute. We're gonna show you 10 bears that we've encountered in our travels, Make sure to list them according to their number in the comments, as well as whether or not it's a black bear or a grizzly bear. And make sure to leave that phrase, don't poke the bear in your comments, and you'll be entered into a drawing for a free don't poke the bear t-shirt. All right, and before we get going with that quiz, I just wanna take a moment and thank you for being with us today. We really appreciate the support from all of you in our community. If you're joining us for the first time, again, please hit that subscribe button. We work very hard to create some of the best content for the outdoors that you will find anywhere online. We also want to take a moment and announce that At Home in Wild Spaces is now officially on Patreon. Making videos like this one take considerable time and effort, and Patreon really allows you to join the At Home in Wild Spaces team and contribute. So if you would like to help us out, then please consider heading over to Patreon. We appreciate everything that you do, and we have some great benefits and great rewards for those of our followers who support us there on Patreon. All right, with that being said, here's your quiz. We can't wait to read your guys' comments and announce the winner in the following video. As always, have fun. Stay safe and make sure to leave no trace.